The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending today's Migrating from an Oracle on-premise e-commerce platform to Oracle Commerce Cloud, the Things Remembered Story webinar brought to you by Pipeline Pros, Things Remembered, and Tice Tech. Before we begin, I would like to share a few housekeeping notes. All attendees have been placed into listen-only mode. Please insert any questions for today's presenters into the questions module. If you experience any technical difficulties during today's webinar, please troubleshoot using the chat module. A recording of this webinar can be found under the community tab on pipelinepros.org within 24 hours of the conclusion of this webcast. Now at this time, we ask that you sit back and enjoy today's webinar. Mike, the well, floor is all thank yours. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, I appreciate it, Jesse. And I'm Mike Graziano, the SVP of Sales and Client Service at Tyus Tech. And with us today, the main attraction is Surya Kapera, the Assistant Vice President of E-Commerce at Things Remembered. Uh, Tyus Tech began working with Things Remembered uh, two years ago this month with their OCC implementation. And Surya joined about a year and a half ago and prior to that spent nine years at L Brands. So um, Surya, anything else you'd like to bring up in terms of your experience? Thanks, Mike, for the introduction. That's, I think, pretty much about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, one of the things that I'd like to bring up is um, Surya and I had the opportunity to attend the Insight Conference in Denver last July and uh, do, last uh, end of July, beginning of August, and do a panel. And um, to me, as someone who's been going to trade shows since um, the late uh, 90s, e-commerce trade shows, I thought it was the best conference I'd been to in a very long time, uh, mostly driven by a combination of the content and the highly collegial environment and the collaboration among the attendees. So um, we're counting down to Insight 2019 in Austin, Texas, uh, the end of next August, and uh, looking forward to seeing you there again too, sir. Yeah. Pretty sure I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Well, as we kick this off, can um, you just give us a little bit about background, Surya, the history of the company? Yep, sure. Um, this company is almost um, close to 35 to 40 years old, um, leading uh, personalization gift services company. And uh, they do have um, 450 plus stores. Um, um, in all states and including Canada. Um, we do have some stores in Canada. Uh, we do engrave, um, it's very personalized gifts and we engrave uh, not only the products that we sell, but also the products that uh, the customers bring in, like if they have any um, memories or um, products like antiques or anything that they can bring in store or um, stores are uh, enabled to personalize and provide uh, um, that experience. Um, we do have web, um, we do have uh, sales into Canada, but uh, those at this point are through phone channel and we do have B2B. Um, we're, we are trying to do enhance a lot of other areas to improve our um, customer experience, provide the best products to um, our customers. Okay, and then over the years, um, what would you say has changed in terms of how you guys sell and take your products to market? Um, I would say like uh, it's as as technology is changing. I'm like it's it's um, customers' expectation and then their um, behavior is changing and. Um, a lot of the things that we need to adapt was like um, how we can um, still give the same um, qualified product, enabling faster delivery and uh, providing um, like, for example, like today we do have a store, um, any order that you place online, you can pick up within four hours, uh, turn it on time in store. So, we are trying to get to the, the, the tools and technologies that we can enable our customers for their best experience. 
Okay. Hey, uh, sir, you know what? Can you just expand on that a little bit, that somebody can order online and pick up in store? How does that work with OCC? So that, that's an extension um, integration to something else that you guys built? Um, there are a few things that we used, um, which we have within the OCC platform, but uh, we do have our extended um, um, modules that we customized where we take the order, but uh, we send that order directly to a store where uh, they have four, four hours of turnaround time. Um, generally, they do a pretty good job, like having that ready and sending a notification to our customer within two hours. But um, yes, the order is through OCC, but there is um, extended customization that um, sends a notification to our uh, specific store where the where the customer is uh, picking up. So, like many of the um, members of Pipeline Pros and the attendees, um, you know, so many companies uh, are on an on-premise platform, and in your case, you guys moved from an on-prem platform to OCC in 2015. Uh, can you share with the audience uh, some of the reasons uh, what led you guys to that decision? Um, again, I, I started last year, but uh, what I can tell uh, the benefits, what I'm seeing and what we are focused on is the flexibility. Like we are um, adapting latest and greatest releases done by Oracle and uh, we are trying to learn what their offerings are like for, for instance, like artificial intelligence recommendations and all that stuff. Importantly, the scalability and availability from a uh, SaaS platform um, is one of the, the, the best things, right? So uh, we are definitely using that um, and we are trying to improve um, any um, areas. Like for instance, we did a checkout enhancement where our conversion um, prior to that was at 71.6. After the conver after the, those improvements, it was 90.8, uh, which is a pretty good um, improvement on that. Uh, apart from that, we did improve 50% uh, of our performance on the checkout area, so which is a wow. plus. Uh, um, good numbers, um, important stuff that, um, um, that I look at is like, I don't maintain that infrastructure. Um, as long as we know what's going on, what upgrades we are, they are being applied. We don't have any um, infrastructure guy to maintain our infrastructure, especially for this fast platform. So as you talk about infrastructure, and you know, obviously there's a number of releases being rolled out, you know, per year on OCC. You know, can you talk about that upgrade process? Are you finding it something that's simple? Is it more complicated than it's and than expected? What, what are your comments in terms of taking advantage of the different upgrades that are rolled out? That's a really good question, Mike. Um, um, the important thing, like when I started, was like we um, our implementation um, was on 15. Uh, Oracle 15.3, I believe, if I'm not wrong. And then um, in, until 2017, um, we were on the same version, but um, in 2017, mid of 2017, uh, we decided to move um, to the latest version because uh, we wanted to use the other benefits that we were reading about it. So we switched to 17.6, um, which was a bigger, migration or bigger upgrade that we went with that's the only time that we had to spend um like few weeks to validate in one of our dev and query staging environments um where there were a lot of other things that came out after 15.3 where we need to adjust some code optimize our customization customization um, but after that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we get notified for, hey, we have this release coming, and then we um, provide a date. And uh, for dev QA, we'll test um, our regular suite of test cases, and if everything is good, our critical metrics are 
uh, not impacted, then we basically say provide a timeline and um, the upgrade happens. So after 17.6, most of them were seamless. We had some issues, but those were quickly addressed either by internal team or we work with our crew closely with the SRs and then they quickly address those critical issues. Okay, and, and you know, with that said, at this point, how much effort is it on your side to do an upgrade? Is it a couple of weeks? Um, to be honest with you, I mean, like there's, there's nothing we do other than validation. And if there is um, really changes that we need to do on the code, um, I'll give you an example, like 18.1, I don't remember anything that we changed from a code perspective on 18.3, now we are on the latest, greatest version of 18C, 18, I think 18C, yeah. Um, we didn't do any code changes from our side, and there were some um, config uh, changes that they have to update, but otherwise, like, QA, QAing is the time, so it's, Probably I would say one or two QAs for um, a week. Okay. You know, obviously you guys, um, you know, have done that journey and and the you know conversion from on-prem to OCC and you know realizing you know obviously you've been there uh, just over a year. What what are the lessons that you've learned along the way that you could share with the audience? Um, my um, policy is simple. Like I mean, like um, again, this is common, and everybody knows about this. Like I, I'm not sharing anything secret or anything like that. But the strategy, um, as long as we know our product, what's our core product, and what we want to achieve, and who's your audience. Just focus on your goals, milestones, and see if this part is going to work. And then um, the way we looked at is the modularization. So we wanted to compartmentalize and release and then adapt what we want to customize and don't customize what you don't want to customize because the, the benefit of out, of out of the box solution is to ensure that you're not deviating from um, the out of the box provided code base which would change based on the releases, right? So um, my point of view is like, again, know your product, focus on what you wanna do, and then create your milestones. Um, go with the lean principles, which is what I follow always. Okay. Um, you had mentioned the success metric at the you know beginning of the conversation are there any other metrics that you can share, perhaps whether it's related to page load times, um, lift and conversion or sales or traffic? Um, this is also very interesting because we just finished our performance test um, in one of our staging environment, which is close to production by code base and by um, catalog, but it's not uh, the same footprint as production because our production footprint is m probably six times more than our staging environment. Um, and um, one of our developers and the team was doing a performance test and the shared metrics. Um, uh, we are able to drop um, 250 orders per minute, which was like way higher than what we are expecting. And we ran for an eight, eight hours of complete uh, site testing, mimicking like customer behavior. It's not exactly what they do, but at least close to what they do, like search, browse, personalize, and some of them are dropping orders. So um, definitely I can see which was not uh, the same metrics that I was given by historical data with the, the previous solution where the highest was 1500 per hour, which is like we're doing per minute 300 and 234 plus orders. Um, definitely um, the, the, the performance of the site, like page loads and order drop, everything, um, I would confidently say that, that the holiday, uh, for our holiday, we are ready for the volume. Okay. 
You know, the, the one other question that uh, came up the, the last time you and I got together uh, that the audience was very interested in, is there any information regarding TCO, um, even if it's anecdotally, you know, in terms of, okay, you guys have made the switch and seeing a decrease in TCO? Um. I'm sorry, but uh, Siri just decided she wanted to answer your question. I have no idea. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, no problem. I, what I can share uh, is um, definitely um, the goal in 2017 was stabilize the platform and get to the flat sales as 2015. Um, but we were um, we were able to get um, the sales higher to close to 11 to 17 percent of increase in sales. Um, also, traffic, uh, especially with uh, no performance issues. Um, 2007 holiday was the smoother than anything. Uh, we had one issue where we uh, it was not related to OCC, but it's another vendor which was down for the across the fleet for retailers but nothing else okay you know one of the um, considerations as companies consider moving you know from an in you know on-prem solution to the cloud is what impact might it have on their organizational structure is there any information you can share about how your org structure and support might have changed internally since making the move? Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, like I, other than the infrastructure, um, our merchandising team, our operations team is the same, but um, definitely, I would say like the, the infrastructure um, and our dev footprint went down. There is no infrastructure um, and uh, the dev team is basically we closely work with uh, um, two of our internal uh, front end developers plus like um, uh, our service integration partners, which is uh, like two to four developers, depending on the project. Uh, 2018 has been a big project year because 2017 was more getting to the latest and uh, stability and then increasing the sales. So I would say um, the main um, areas are like the infrastructure. We don't have anyone. And then, um, of course, dev um, team is smaller. So that's the only organizational change I can think of. And then what, what about in processes, Siri? Are we able to streamline anything in particular? Um, Process-wise, like, are you talking about the, the, the content updates or anything like that, guys? Well, that, and I, I know that we've um, had conversations in terms of um, headless commerce or perhaps a goal to move uh, more process um, to the OCC from the back end? Yeah, I mean, um, in the future, like that's on our roadmap for us to make some additional changes um, as far as the order management system. Um, and what we did, uh, we did change some um, in 2018 as far as uh, addressing some inventory and uh, that type of issues. But there's a bigger roadmap on focusing on OMS for 2019. Okay. And then since you, you brought up the future, um, what other plans might you have in terms of OCC? So right now, again, um, um, I know when we were in Denver, um, I, will, I shared one of the, the initiatives, which we went live phase one in August. And then the phase two is uh, we just released uh, last week, um, enabling few other key uh, improvements for, uh, from an omni-channel perspective. So we implemented a multi-site where um, our, when our customer walks in, they can use um, iPad and that iPad, um, basically one of uh, the site is extended to be used on the iPad specific to that store only. 
so they can browse product they can personalize um and they can uh, drop an order and then just pay at the register so it's in a kiosk more like it's, it's a experience that we want the customer to go through uh, while they are in store and it's the same experience they are on the website so um simplified narrowed down version of the same extension of the catalog um, but it's um um, the customers, like if, if you, the direct impact with that is like we have a virtual assistant or virtual associate that's taking an order uh, and the actual associate can focus on some sales on the floor. So that's a really good uh, concept that we did and uh, it's working out well and we are planning on extending that. And then also like we're trying to extend a B2B site and Canada site uh, with the similar approaches. You know, one of the things that um, you had mentioned too, um, it's more B2B side and a customization was removing a manual process from when somebody places an engraved order that rather than that being, you know, printed out human intervention and then being, you know, having to be typed into the machine, that those orders will now be placed directly to the engraving or embroidering machine? Yeah, there is an initiative we did uh, almost close to, um, I would say 30% of the, the work done, where our 30% of our products will be directly sent to the engraving um, machines, which is, um, um, uh, it's an engraving automation project, but, um, there are a few things that we want to focus on the front end with a top-down approach where um, we would like to capture the images and everything what customer is seeing uh, personalized and then we would like to send that data directly to the machines um, one of the reasons we only went with the 30 percent uh, this year was uh, we wanted to give uh, what customer wants we don't want to restrict what we want them to do so uh, the goal for next year is um come up with uh, a usable uh, do a usability study and then come up with a good solution for whatever they want like for instance um they can drop an image on top of a, a product they can enter text they can use some designs um a template based approach but at the end um what they see is what we want them to uh receive when they receive a package so it gives a exact experience what they are seeing and um, the product when it's delivered it's it's the same like we wanted to get to the hundred percent view of the product but also reduce the, the the manual personalization process at the fulfillment center right right so um, as we wrap up the uh, Q&A part between you and I um, of the session, um, I just want to let the audience know that they can begin uh, typing in their questions um, in the uh, questions box. And um, also uh, joining us is uh, Gurvinder Burgada. Uh, he's our Senior Director of Technology and heads up our OCC practice, as well as Mike Cristancho, our um, Director of Solution Consulting. So if, you, if the audience wants to go ahead and start typing some questions as um, we continue the discussion, then we can begin uh, getting you guys some answers. So as we're wrapping up, Surya, you know, obviously, what, what kind of guidance can you provide to the audience um, for those members that might be considering making a move to Oracle Commerce Cloud? Um, I would say, um, again, uh, I think it's the same, um, a question differently asked, but um, um, look around like what we want to achieve and um, basically switching to Cloud platform um, for us, um, it's a good learning process at the beginning um, where we wanted to first implement our core product in there versus learning um, what all the, the platform is offering. Now we know uh, it's helping us to like, quickly 
create our roadmap and focus on the areas. So anybody in the future who is um, going to uh, switch to the, the cloud platform, again, um, it's, it's a lot of the things are already there. Um, AI is built in now, um, artificial intelligence, like loyalty program, B2B, uh, B2C, and then um, a subscription module that I was there um, uh, in Oracle conference like last week. It's like a lot of benefits. So my uh, suggestion would be like, look at everything and then plan on a strategy and milestone, create that. And then um, that would really help to achieve the goal quicker uh, using the same platform. Okay. Well, we, we thank you, Surya. And at this time, if the audience has questions that they'd like to type in, um, we'll do our best to get you answers. Thank you, Mike. It, it, it's my pleasure. And um, um, anything that I can answer, I'll be glad to do that. Let me know. Right. And um, hopefully looking forward to seeing you uh, next August in Austin, if not before then. Sure. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. So um, are there any questions from the audience? We have had a few questions come in, so um, with, while the panelists take a moment to look through the questions, uh, with just a couple of reminders, the um, Insight 19 uh, con conference registration will open on November 15th, so mark that on your calendar for those who are already interested in attending Insight 19. In addition, on November 16th, Pipeline Pros will be hosting Gary from Oracle, Gary Kirshner, and he will be presenting the latest and greatest Oracle Commerce and Oracle Commerce Cloud Roadmap. So be sure to sign up for those as well. All right. Hey, Jesse, just a quick um, FYI that we can't see the questions. So um, can you just read some out for us? Yes. The first question we have is, do you have new skills that your existing teams needed to develop when moving to the cloud? Good, Surya? Um, no, I think it's pretty much um, anybody who knows like AngularJS, ReactJS are um, in the future, I think they're even coming up with the headless architecture so you could opt in for any technology. Um, on my team, we didn't have any knockout JS experts, but we had Angular JS, like they already know Angular JS, and it's very similar JavaScript framework. The next question is, is the virtual assistant leveraging artificial intelligence, and is the digital assistant integrated with OCC in the kiosk? Um, no, this is, we call virtual assistant by terminology, but it's it's an extension of the OCC platform. It's a multi-site extension. Um, it's basically, we had a paper, paper like order written process because there is no visual view where the customer was seeing in stores, but the, the customers who are using website, they had a visual experience of how the product is engraved which is what we wanted to introduce in stores and we extended website um, on iPad. And then um, that's what I'm, we are calling it virtual assistant, but it's not anything other than the website. So I see the next question is, um, how about customizations, which we have done on, in the on-prem application? Will those be supported? Does OCC allow customization or do we have to stick with out of the box OCC? So uh, Guru, uh, Gurvinder, if uh, yeah. you can take that Thanks one. For us. Yeah. So for that question, yeah, the OCC does allow uh, extension and customizations uh, to the out of the box widgets. Uh, you can do all client side uh, uh, customization for the widgets and for server side there is uh, an ability for server side extensions using node.js and express.js 
that comes out of the box. Like there's a support for server side extensions. And then if there is a, like a full blown, blown functionalities that you want to um, integrate with OCC, then you'll have to probably go with something, you know, um, you know, a space server space outside of OCC, like, uh, you know, uh, Oracle uh, cloud infrastructure or your on-premise, uh, you know, server where you can develop in any uh, backend language like Java or uh, probably, uh, you know, some other scripting languages um, and then integrate via APIs to OCC. So OCC is pretty much extensible to any extent. You can use their own uh, out of the box uh, server side extensions or, you know, something you want to leverage as on premise. And that's part of what we do also for our clients in terms of an ATG to OCC migration analysis. I mean, where we're looking at your infrastructure, your skill set, the customizations you have, and what's the best path forward. So um, that's part of the process, as well as an ATG to OCC migration toolkit. Yeah, I think that answers the another question that was I see in the uh, question list is, how does the role of an SI differ from OCC to on-prem? Are customization still done in a similar way? Still need Java expertise? So I would say yes, uh, if you plan to integrate anything that is, uh, that is a feature, uh, you know, thought, uh, that is not present in OCC and that's specific custom to your uh, company, then you can do um, development in either Java or any other language and then hook it up to OCC via APIs. Okay, are there any further questions? All right, I'll just check with you one more time, Jesse. Was there anything else? Yeah, I see one more question uh, in the chat it says, in comparison to Elastic Path and Commerce Tools, what makes OCC as advantages? Is there any scope of creating custom microservices if some someone uses OCC? In today's headless commerce area, why I need to depend on certain platforms like OCC? So yeah, that's a great question. Um, um, I think OCC can be used as a headless architecture. Uh, Oracle has you know, published some uh, articles on how we can use OCC as a headless architecture. The advantage here, I, I feel, is it's all the commerce, uh, you know, uh, modules available for you via APIs, and then using those APIs, either you know, through the server-side extensions, you can come up with your own um, microservices, or integrate, uh, you know, like I explained previously, you know, uh, like a full-blown functionality, like Git registries kind of stuff that you, you want to have control over. Now those uh, add-on microservices can be added to OCC. And then I see the one above that guru is OCC fully microservice based SaaS platform. Why would someone in ATG be willing to transform to OCC rather than build their own microservices for all commerce modules and deploy in any public cloud? So uh, to answer that, uh, I feel you know developing your own microservices involves a lot of testing and uh, you know make sure the distributed architecture that uh, you know working on is um, optimized and uh, you know fully integrated. Uh, the benefit that you get from OCC is you know all the APIs and you know microservices have been tested uh, for uh, you know performance, load, and several other um, you know attributes that uh, Oracle take into account. Doing it right from scratch, uh, you know, will involve more effort, more maintenance, and uh, you know, one advantage it does give you is like more control. But uh, there are other cones that uh, you would have to take care of if you start building your own microservices. Here, it's like uh, the platform is maturing, and you know, there are a lot of performance improvements in the platform, and the APIs work in conjunction great. Um, so in all, uh, you know, it, it's a proven, proven platform that, uh, you know, Oracle has and, uh, you know, gives you more uh, ability to uh, build a performant storefront. Okay. Thank you, Guru. Um, another question has come in that um, just looking if there's any other information in terms of TCO, versus on-prem costs? What percent difference on costs can we expect 
Um, I, I can share anecdotal information and I'm willing to be wrong, uh, but when we did the panel at the Pipeline Pros Insight Conference, um, uh, Ross from PetMate had said they saw just south, I believe, of a 30% savings in TCO. And if I'm remembering correctly and I'm willing to be wrong, I believe it was John Spencer from Vermont Country Store, also a Pipeline Pros member, said that I think they were somewhere at under 20%. So again, willing to be wrong on that, but that's what I recall from the panel. Yeah, and, and just to add on to uh, your point, Graza, I think uh, moving on to a SaaS-based uh, platform like uh, Oracle Commerce Cloud, there's definitely more savings to your licensing and uh, your upgrade costs. Uh, like uh, you don't have to purchase separate licenses for ATG and DECA and uh, you know other uh, softwares. It's just one uh, license that you purchase uh, on OCC and you get uh, you know the storefront, you get the Endeca license in inbuilt, and you get the search and um, agent console. You know, and then you get the freedom of uh, free upgrades uh, from Oracle that you don't have to heavily invest on ATG. Like every new upgrade that comes in, you have to invest on upgrading the platform, uh, upgrade the infrastructure, uh, and uh, uh, you know it all comes in in, in your license. So. Uh, you, you know, all the upgrades are free and they come every three months and they are all automatically applied by Oracle. Uh, no need to uh, worry about the infrastructure. Oracle takes care of that. And it's all multi-side on one instance that you can uh, basically roll out. And uh, Guru, there's another question that came in in terms of how should I maintain uh, builds and releases? Is there any DevOps scope in OCC? Um, I mean, for the build and uh, release plan, uh, we do have customers that are uh, you know, involved in uh, planning the release. I think things remembered uh, as well is, um, uh, so I want to speak up on, 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 on those front, uh, but uh, I'll just talk to the rest of the clients that, um, you know, where we have some certain custom functionalities built outside of OCC, we do have, you know, build and release plans for those when we, you know, go live with certain phases with OCC. Do you want to add on something on things remembered side or you know, I think that's like a generic uh, thing that I've seen for all the clients. Yeah, I mean um, the way Guru we maintained our releases are um, uh, apart from the upgrade. So I I would separate those two differently. So when I re when I say release our custom code or any things that we want to release, for example, um, checkout enhancement was a release versus our OCC upgrade is um I, I i call that as upgrade so we tried to plan like if there is a critical update we wanted to upgrade that and then apply uh, release our changes on top of it uh, which happened in august month where we had both upgrade and a release so we started our development we were ready to release but we know that there was a critical upgrade coming in so we waited for the upgrade to come in um, and then we tested our latest changes on top of it to make sure like everything is working and then we release. So it's just like, I think it's just the planning. Um, the way we do from an agile methodology is like uh, every three weeks, um, but we would, we would alter if there is a upgrade on top of it. Okay. Thanks guys. Look, there, um, we have a, just a couple more questions and um, one of them is there seems to be some confusion on how OCC is hosted, meaning moving uh, current ATG or e-commerce platform to the public cloud, i.e. Um, Amazon Web Services or Azure. Um, OCC is SaaS based, correct? Can you clarify, please? Thank you. Yes. So OCC is SaaS based. Uh, uh, it's uh, you know if you're moving to public cloud, it's AWS and Azure. Um, I I think you should check with the Oracle rep if you know Oracle is going to support that uh, from terms of uh, you know support and uh, from the customer support and uh, in terms of raising tickets uh, to your ATG platform. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Oracle is SaaS based and it's a separate license and they have their own uh, data centers where they host uh, you know all these you know OCC um, you know instances. 
All right. We'll take, um, here's the last question. Um, was there any limitations faced in terms of the platform's features while moving from on-prem to cloud? For example, any limit to promotion type supported in OCC, payment integration supported, number of SKUs supported, et cetera. Sudhir, so, do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer that? You can go ahead, Guru. <laughs> okay, so in terms of uh, limitations, uh, I haven't seen any uh, limitations. Uh, uh, I would say uh, it, it's just that the features are you know being added on every three months. It's just a timing based. Uh, but I've seen in clients that if they want any feature that may not be present right away in that release, but it's oncoming in the roadmap in the next three months. And then uh, we'll have to call out that, you know, whether that feature is absolutely necessary in that release, uh, you want to custom build it or you want to wait for Oracle to roll it out. And then um, I, I haven't seen any uh, differences in the promotions. All the promotions that are supported in uh, ATG have been supported in OCC. And I think they are rolling out more support for advanced, uh, you know, PMDLs that in, is already there in the platform, uh, but templates, uh, they are, they've been, you know, rolling out uh, every now and then. I don't see any differences in the promotion templates as such in ATG and OCC. And payment integration is supported, like you can integrate to any payment provider in OCC. Uh, CyberSource, Chase Payment Tech, uh, PayPal, PayULatum, and a couple of others are supported out of the box. You just have to put in your merchant IDs and configurations and you're good to go. But uh, in terms of uh, integrating to any uh, external payment provider, uh, you know, there is a minimal effort required uh, to integrate that. I haven't seen that uh, a very uh, big of an effort there. But in ATG, I feel that comparative to ATG, it is much simpler doing integrations in OCC. So, uh, and the number of SKUs that I've uh, heard from Oracle folks is like it's close to 1 million. Uh, it, it can support more than that. Uh, I'll not uh, just define those numbers, but, uh, you know, they have said that uh, up to 1 million they have seen that performance has been uh, great but you know i would the official statement i would still want oracle to you know give that um, but i've seen that most of the customers that we have supported are well under that number and we haven't seen any uh, performance uh, issues with the catalog so um you know we did get in uh, two more questions um so one of them i think it'll be an easy one are we limited by a certain number of templates to a particular look and feel? No, so you can uh, basically change the template for uh, however you like. With the uh, you know support of multi-site, we can have this you know different number of templates for each site, and you can style it accordingly um, uh, for that particular site, uh, as per CSS or you know however you want to you know, put the theme on. So OCC does support uh, any number of multi-sites with any customizations to all the templates in terms of look and feel. And then the, here we go, Guru, is parallel development a challenge in OCC? I've heard people say that multiple folks can't work on the same widget at the same time. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, um, you, you'll have to, um, you know, Plan it according, you know, when you uh, start for development uh, on a project. So uh, OCC does support uh, design code utility. That's called DCU, uh, and we have been using that uh, in almost all the projects now. Uh, and uh, you know, in things remembered, also, you know, we have used the same uh, utility where you download all the widget codes on your local, and then start uh, you know making changes and testing it out. And then all that code resides on a Git repository. So whosoever uh, makes the changes, you'll have to pull, make a pull request, take the latest updates, and then start uh, making changes. Because DCU allows you to test all your changes on your local system and not on the, uh, you know, directly on the OCC. So that avoids any conflicts or any issues. And then each developer can have a local copy of all the widgets and then test it out using the DC, DCU code utility. Hey, um, Guru, just to add to your answer, I would say like that's that would be a code management issue. That could be a problem anywhere, um, however you do it. As long as you have a strategy on code 
um, repository and how you deploy the code. It's not a limitation. Um, and, um, and another good news is uh, I think uh, I was in, I brought up similar question, not necessarily a limitation because we had a work around how we manage the code between DCU, CC proxy and Bitbucket and your CI server. You can, you can have developers work on the same widget at any point of time, as long as you manage the code, merge the code, test the code, deploy the code, uh, you're good to go. Um, but good news is I think um, in open world, I heard uh, they are working on Bitbucket integration and that's coming soon, which would even um, simplifies that process. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, you Surya. So um, that's all we have for today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, there's a scary picture for Halloween um, and a phone number if you want to reach me. Um, and obviously, um, if you'd like to connect with Surya, you know, we all belong to Pipeline Pros, um, or I can connect you directly. Um, so Surya, uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, Pipeline Pros, as always, we appreciate the opportunity to bring this uh, client and case study to the audience. And uh, Guru, thank you for your support. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Russ. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thanks everyone for attending today's migrating from Oracle on-premise e-commerce platform to Oracle Commerce Cloud, the Fingers Remembered Story webcast. You will find a video playback of this webinar under the community tab within 24 hours. If you have any feedback or suggestions for other webinar topics, please email us at info at pipelinepros.org. Again, thank you for attending. This does conclude today's webcast.